All right, it took me three years to become a profitable trader and over 10 years to be able to quit my job and do trading full time. Trading is by far the hardest way that I've ever known to make money, but it is also the most rewarding. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 lessons I learned to help you become a profitable trader quicker. If I had to start over, this is exactly what I would do and not do. Now, there are no shortcuts in this trading game, but there are faster tracks than others. And I guarantee you that if you pick up just some of these you will see an improvement in your trading immediately. So sit back, relax, let's get right into it. Here's how I would start trading if I had to start over. Now, number one is, of course, strategy. You cannot start day trading if you don't know what you are going to be doing the minute that you turn your computer on. This is not a game of chance. This is not gambling. If you want to do that, go to Vegas. It's a lot funner. The drinks are free. This is actually a business. This is a discipline. Now, there are many strategies out there, and it took me years of refinement to get me to the strategy that I'm trading today. And just the caveat, there is not one single strategy that works, and you will see later why you actually only need a strategy to work. 50% of the time for you to become a profitable trader if you stick to your principles and your discipline. So this is a strategy that works for me. To me, this is the most profitable strategy, the one that is the most consistent that I've traded over the years. Believe me, I've traded every single pattern. I've traded almost every single strategy, all the retail ones that you learn when you first start trading, you know, identifying double tops, head and shoulders, etc., trend lines, trading off of volume, trading off of moving average crossovers, looking at the RSI, looking at the mag to me, most of that stuff is fluff. Most of that stuff does not belong in an actual trading strategy. Some of these things you can use in confluence, but here is the main strategy. I'm going to break it down for you right now. And this is an actual trade that we took. This was on Tesla. We took this trade last week as of the time of this recording. But basically the trading strategy is really easy once you were able to identify a few key different things. One is liquidity. So in this case, if you notice, the market is just a series of taking liquidity on both sides. Here we call this sell side liquidity and up top we call it buy side liquidity. I think incorrectly identify this as supply and demand. This is liquidity and essentially what you see a lot of times is because the market is moved by bigger institutions. The market is not moved by retail. So a lot of times what you see is you will have your support and resistance drawn right where you will think for instance oh this is a double bottom here. However oftentimes you will see liquidity taken below resistance below this demand zone, you will see liquidity taken. Because if the banks want to go long and retail wants to go long, then how are the large institutions and banks going to get their orders filled if everyone wants to go long from here? Well, they know everybody's stop limit is placed right here in the form of sell orders. Because if you're buying here, then you sell here to stop out. This is why it is called sell side liquidity. So you can see a series of liquidity taken every single day from the sell side, it moves to the buy side, it moves back to the sell side. On some days, you will get consolidation, ugly sideways movement. But on these trending days, this is what you want to look at. Now, after you identify liquidity, the next thing is to identify market structure break. And I know that this stuff might be complicated if you are a beginner. There are YouTube videos and Google resources on all of this stuff. I'm just breaking down this video into the top 10 things that will help you become a better trader. So I have to make this concise, but you can look this stuff up in further detail. So we have a market structure break. The market is making higher highs and higher lows initially as you see here higher highs and higher lows and then eventually we break structure and now the market wants to go bearish and make lower highs and lower lows so we trade we wait for that market structure break and trade this retracement this is what we took short now you can combine this with confluence the confluences that I like to use are the Fibonacci retracements you can see that this is at the golden pocket you can also pull up something like a moving average crossover and see that the 8 EMA for instance is below the 20 one EMA if that you know helps you and that is how you trade we also retraced into the 21 EMA which is the green line here so there are a number of confluences that you can use you can also use something called fair value gaps which is a concept that was uh, popularized by the inner circle trader so you see essentially that you have a fair value gap here which coincides with that area of confluence and then in on Tesla in this case we bought the at the money puts that is just an example of a strategy 
strategy that works for me and I think the most ironclad strategy that I've ever traded. So again, it consists of finding liquidity, waiting for a market structure break. After you get the break, waiting for a retracement into your area of confluence and then taking the trade from there. Now, as I said, it doesn't really matter what strategy you use as long as you are honest with yourself and through backtesting, you know that your strategy is at least 50% effective. And we will get into this more when we talk about risk management, why strategy does not matter as much as execution. So number two, let's talk about risk management and why this is actually more important than your strategy. So again, same trade on Tesla. Let's just say that we wanted to take this short. You should not be taking any trade without knowing exactly where your stop is and exactly where your take profit is. Because if you were to take this trade, for instance, but you didn't know where your take profit was, your take profit could actually make your trade upside down. What do I mean by that? If your take profit was here and you had a stop, let's say here, for instance, arbitrarily, your risk to reward ratio is less than one. You are upside down on this trade. This trade is not a valid trade, even if the entry is valid. So you want to draw your risk to reward every single time when you trade. So let's just say we enter this trade at the retest of, for simplicity's sake, that 21 EMA, you set your stop limit, say above this candle here that created this imbalance. And now you want to know where your take profit is. Well, I have VWAP right here and I always have VWAP up on my chart. And I know that VWAP acts like a magnet when the price is moving down towards it or up towards it. So even if I have VWAP as my target, you could see that my risk to reward ratio is 2.65 to one. That means I'm risking one to make 2.65. That is an excellent risk to reward ratio. I always try to keep my RR two to one or better. In this case, we have 2.65 to one. So let's just say that you only took two to one trades how many trades do you have to win in order to be profitable? Well, in this case, the formula is one divided by your risk to award, let's just say two plus one, and you come out with 33%, right? One divided by three equals 33%. So if you win more than 33% of your trades and you only take two to one R trades, you only need to win more than 33% of your trades to become profitable. Risk management is much more important than strategy. So if you are back testing and say that you only trade an 821 EMA crossover, you only need that strategy to work more than 33% of the time in order for you to make money on two to one R trades. So next time, never ever trade without pulling up this tool and seeing what your risk to reward ratio is. Number three, set realistic price targets and take profit. In this case, I see what I see a lot of beginners do when they find out about this tool is they will drag out this profit target to somewhere that's very unrealistic based on price action. And they'll say, oh, this is an eight to one trade or a 7.75 to one trade. Now, eventually Tesla did end up going there. But my point is that a lot of times traders in the beginning will set very ambitious targets, not really based on technical analysis. And they don't have the experience to know whether the stock they are trading or the index they're trading, they don't know how it moves and whether that is actually a realistic target. They just want to see an astronomical number. And most of the time when they do this, they will take profit a lot sooner, by the way, than this profit target because they panic when they see that their PL is in the green. So set realistic targets. And if your target puts you upside down on a trade, which is less than two to one and definitely less than one to one, you do not want to take the trade, even if the setup is there. Number four, do not let your PL, your profit and loss, dictate whether to stay in the trade. A lot of times, what traders will do is they will see that they are green. And once they are in the green, they will take profit, even if they initially drew out the risk to reward and the risk to reward was actually realistic, they will still take profit out of panic. This is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make as a trader is taking profit too early because you want to let your trades run if you have realistic targets. This is why realistic targets are so important. So, a lot of times, what traders will do is they will see their profit and loss, you know, something really big like this. And they will look at this as opposed to looking at the chart to take profit. Do not look at your profit and loss to determine whether to profit. Look at the chart. See if your targets are still realistic. And if they are, wait for your targets to hit. And if you really have to move your stop limit to break even after your trade becomes significantly green. Tip number five, be as robotic as possible with your stop limits. Another 
another thing, aside from taking winners too early, what beginners or not even beginners, I've seen experienced traders do this. I've done this myself within the first couple of years. I still sometimes fall trapped to it, although it is not an endemic problem like it was initially. But make sure that you are robotic about your stop limits and that you are not holding your losers too long. So the biggest thing, if I was to say that beginners or inexperienced emotional traders do is they hold their losers too long and they cut their winners too quick. You want to reverse this. You want to be so robotic about where your stop loss is and you do not want to even have a question in your mind as to if I just leave it a little bit, will it come back in my favor? Is it going to turn around? I don't want to close it for a loss and then end the, the, the trade end up winning again. Trust me that you are much better off closing it for a loss even if on occasion the trade ends up turning in your favor and now you are out of it. It is much, much more critical and dire and dangerous for you to let your losses mount beyond what you have planned for. And if you make a habit of that, you will go broke and blow your account really quick, much more than you would if you stopped out responsibly and then the trade went in your favor. That does not happen as much as holding a loser too long and then the trade completely go against you while your position is now bleeding insanely, much more than you had planned. You cannot reverse that, but you can re-enter a trade if you exit. You can re-enter another trade. If you found the setup initially, you can find it again. So make sure you are extremely robotic. I cannot stress this enough. Extremely robotic about your exits. If you plan to exit here, that's it. Make sure you exit there no matter what. I don't care what happens. Make sure you exit there. Tip number six, make sure you are journaling your trades, whether you keep track of it on Excel, or on TradeZella or TraderSync or TraderView or whatever you use, make sure you are keeping track of your trades. Don't rely on your statement from your broker. Don't rely on your interactive brokers or thinkorswim statement. You want to know exactly what trades you entered, what your risk to reward was, where did you take profit? Did you take profit too early? Did you stop out too late? Did you break any of your rules? I guarantee you that when you have a losing trade, if you were honest with yourself and you look back at that trade, it wasn't because you followed your rules. Most losing days are a result of you breaking your rules, not following your rules. So if you're not journaling, you will not know how many times you actually break your rules. It will not be at the forefront of your mind. You will not know why you did that. However, if you are journaling your trades and you're like, you know what? I was supposed to wait for confluence. My rule is that I should have at least three confluences to enter a trade. I didn't wait. I jumped the gun because I was too excited. I saw Apple running or Nvidia running and I wanted to catch it. And that's why I entered the trade without following my plan. And if you do not journal, you will not know how often you do this. And moreover, if you do not journal, you will not have a mechanism for you to stop doing that. Because if you are forced to write it down and contend with your mistakes later, if you're forced to do that, then you are much less likely to now the next day break your rules again. But if you are not writing this down, you will break your rules because you're not holding yourself accountable. All right. And I just want to take a moment here and pause and say that in the summer, actually, we are in summer. But next month in July, I'm going to be taking less than 20 students under my wing. We are going to be doing a personal mentorship session. It's going to be eight weeks long. I'm going to be teaching you everything I know from technical analysis to options trading to futures trading to risk management, etc. We're going to be doing a deep dive into every single facet of day trading. And my goal is to make sure that you are a better day trader within eight weeks. There are no shortcuts again, but there are fast tracks. And this to me is is an amazing opportunity that I wish I had when I was just starting out a couple of decades ago now. So make sure you click the link in the description, put your name on the wait list, spots are filling up fast. Once our wait list is capped, that is it. So you will have to apply for this. We will be selecting again, less than 20 people. We've already had over 1500 people on this wait list. So make sure that you put your name on the list. If you are seriously interested, do not bother applying. If you are not 1000% serious about about your trading. I won't hold it against you. I still put out tons of free content here. So make sure you click that link. Let's get right back into it. Tip number seven is back testing. Now you have tools like TradingView at your disposal. When I first started trading, we did not have TradingView. TradingView is free. There is a simple tool called Replay that allows you to go back in time and see what a trading day would have looked like and what a trade would look like if it hit your criteria. So for instance, if you are just a 821 EMA day trader, 
trader. Meaning when the eight crosses below the 21 EMA, you go short or take puts and vice versa. And you see that coming up. You want to go to every day that, that you see that coming up, hit the replay button, back test it and see what happens after and log it down. Log down how many times the trade works in your favor. Now in trading view, you can even click buy or sell here in order to mimic a trade. So if I click sell here and I press play, obviously this is not taking into account options. They're just replicating what would happen if you shorted the stock outright. So this is the price per share that you would make if you had shorted Tesla here. You want to do this for every day the previous week. You want to click the replay button, go back in time and see when a trade hits your criteria, your criteria for entering a trade, does the trade work out or not and log how many times it works out. Again, this goes back to risk management and win rate, etc. You don't need a strategy to work out most of the time for you to successfully be a profitable trader. So make sure you go back and you are looking at whether the trade worked out. And if it worked out, what would your risk to reward yield? How much reward would you yield for the amount that you risked? Go back and mimic it. Where would you put your stop limit? Where would you put your take profit? Back testing is crucial if you want to know whether your trading strategy holds up or not. And as I said before, I guarantee you that if you do have a trading strategy that is profitable or does yield better than 50-50 results, if you have losing days, I guarantee you those losing dates are because you are breaking your rules of your strategy and not following them. Tip number eight is make sure that you are trading the same pairs every day. There are so many reasons for this. Number one is it eliminates you trying to find stocks to trade. One of the most common beginner questions I get is how do I find stocks to trade every morning? Guess what? Good news. You don't have to. There are only a few stocks that you can focus on. I know profitable traders that only trade the S&P 500. So for me, I only trade the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and then a handful of liquid stocks such as Tesla, Apple, Nvidia, etc. You don't have to have a huge basket of stocks to trade. You don't have to look for the next winner. As a matter of fact, another benefit of this is the more that you are familiar with the stock and how it moves, the more it is predictable to you. So make sure that you are not spending an endless amount of time finding stocks to trade. You don't need to do that. Just have a set list that you look at every morning and I guarantee you at least one of those will have one trade. Tip number nine is trade less. I should have put this way above on the list, but one of your goals should be to take as few trades as possible. We are so concerned with win rate. We are so concerned with how much money we're making. We're so concerned with logging a whole array of stats. But one of the things that we don't shoot for is taking less trades. You want to achieve profitability while taking as few trades as possible. Activity does not equal profitability. Keep that in your mind and over time you will learn how to size efficiently where you can increase your size on trades that you have an a plus high conviction on and that way you don't have to take trade after trade after trade after trade etc and number 10 has to do with sizing when it comes to your position size in my view you should not risk more than one to two percent of your entire portfolio now the greener you are the less this should be on the scale it should even be less than one percent but one thing that i want to point you towards is is when you are setting your stop limits. That one to 2% should be if your stop is hit. This is after you've developed a strategy, you know that you're profitable. This is how to maximize your potential and exponentially compound your portfolio of winning trades. Let's just say that your portfolio is $10,000. A lot of times what people will do is they will take a $100 trade or a $200 trade if we're doing 2% on say Tesla for instance. But no, your stop limit should be the size of your trade, not the trade size in and of itself. So it doesn't mean that you should only trade one contract that costs $200. You can trade more than that. But if you were stopped out on the trade, you would only lose $200 or 2% of your $10,000 portfolio. That is a very vital trick as it relates to sizing, because when you get better with your trades, you want your size to be on the heavy side of that one to 2% scale. You don't want it to be really small where on your winning trade, you are not making a significant amount of money. And I'm going to give you a tip at the end. Here are some psychological tips. Do not chase trades. You've heard this before. I'm going to tell you again, but why? Because there are trades every single 
day. If you are skilled enough to find a setup one day, you will find it again, maybe that same day or even the next day. The skill that you have, the skill to fish is what is important here. If you're able to find a trade one day, you can find it again and again and again and again. Chasing just has no business in your strategy. So if a trade passes you by, let it go. You are skilled. You have the skills. You can find it again. Also, don't take trades out of boredom. If you haven't traded all day, that's fine. You don't need to trade every day. I don't trade every day. I trade maybe three times a week, three days a week. I try to trade every day, but most of the time, three out of five days or two out of five days is when I'm actually finding setups that work according to my strategy and my risk management. So make sure that you are not clicking out of boredom. And if you need help with this, here's a very helpful tip. Trading is a zero sum game. What that means is when you lose, someone else is winning your money. There is no better motivator than imagining somebody else enjoying your money, taking their family out on a nice dinner, buying the car of their their dreams, taking their family out on the vacation of their dreams, spending their money on cigars and fine wine, or even just tucking it away for a rainy day. That is your money. So if you have a problem with clicking around out of boredom, just remember that if you lose that money, it's going to end up in some other hands. So make sure that if that irks you, you don't just click around out of boredom. And if you need further help with this, type out a contract, say, I will only take trades according to my strategy. I will not chase trades. I will not click out of boredom. Print out 250 of those for every trading day of the week. Leave them on your desk, sign one every morning and leave it right here, right next to your keyboard. And that way you will not do something stupid on a daily basis. If you do, you have that to keep you in check. Hopefully this helped you. Again, we are taking less than 20 students for our July summer mentorship. If you are really interested in it and you are serious, click that link below and apply. Would love to have you if we select you. If you got anything out of this video, leave it in the comment section below. Let me know what helped you. Was there anything new? Were there any additional tips that maybe you might have that I didn't cover? Leave that in the comment section below. Hit that thumbs up if you got anything out of this video. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel and continuing to check out the channel. Stay safe out there traders. Peace.